Now that we've had a look at how to get out and set up a microscope, let's take a look at what it can do. For this demonstration, I'm going to use this particular microscope, which is very similar to the ones that we have in the lab, with the exception that it has a trinicular lens setup, which allows us to add a camera to the third lens so that we can capture the images that we're viewing on the slide. Let's do a quick review of the stage and mechanical stage controls. As you recall, the stage is the platform on which the slide sits. The mechanical stage is a little set of caliper arms that hold the slide in place. Now, when we look at the controls to move the stage and the mechanical stage, we see that they are located under the stage. The top knob controls the stage and the bottom knob controls the mechanical stage. So that when you turn the top knob, it moves the stage forward and backwards. And when you turn the bottom knob, it moves the mechanical stage side to side, allowing you to center the slide over the substage light. Now let's have a closer look at the condenser and the iris diaphragm. Both of them are contained within a housing that sits directly under the stage. And on my microscope, I can remove this and show you that we can see the actual lens, which is the condenser. The iris diaphragm is a set of metal leaves that controls the size of the aperture, which in turn controls the amount of light that is able to pass through the slide from the substage light. The iris diaphragm is controlled by the iris diaphragm lever. Let's review the coarse and fine focus. These are the knobs on the side of the microscope that control the distance of the stage from the objective lens. And this is what is going to allow you to bring the image on the slide into focus so that you can see it clearly. So first let's look at the coarse focus. This is the larger of the two knobs located on the inside. It will move the stage very quickly in large movements. Here is the fine focus that makes very small adjustments so that when you have the slide nearly in focus or very close, you can just make some fine adjustments. Here we can see the coarse focus moving the stage in large increments. And here we can see the fine focus is moving the stage in very small increments towards or away from the objective lens. A curious phenomenon of the microscope is image reversal. And that is that when we view something under the microscope, it will appear upside down and backwards. And this is due to the fact that we're using a biconvex lens or a lens that is curved on both sides, and that is going to refract such light in such a way that it will flip the image over and turn it upside down. Probably one of the best ways to demonstrate this effect is by using our slide with the letter E. Here we have one of the ocular lenses from our microscope. And while you probably can't see it here, if we zoom in on it, you can see that the image is indeed flipped upside down and backwards. Now let's view our letter E under the microscope. And sure enough, it's upside down backwards. Our camera view shows us the same thing. But because we have the luxury of having a digital image, we can take that digital image and with a few flips and twists, we can turn the image right side up and facing forward. The field of view refers to that part of the image or the scene that you can actually see. So it is directly proportional to how close you are to it. So let's take this example here where we are several hundred feet above the ground. We are looking down at a model airfield and you can see the runway and you can see the aircraft and you can see a little area that they've marked off for helicopters. Now, if we come a little bit closer, then we see less of that scene because it's as though we are zooming in on it. So we can see not only part of the runway and we can see some of the aircraft but we can't see the same things that we saw when we were further away. If we zoom in either further, that is we get closer, here we're only a few feet off the ground, all we see is grass. The view where we're high off the ground is very similar to what we see with the scanning objective. The partially zoomed in view is what we would see analogously to the low power objective. And then if we move up to the high power objective, then that would be analogous to our looking at the grass just a few feet off the ground. And this illustrates the point why we always start with a scanning objective, because if you start with one of the higher powered lenses, you may miss your subject altogether. Now let's see what this looks like under the microscope, starting with our most zoomed out view with the scanning objective lens. So in this case, we're going to look at a sliver of human compact bone. 
which is made up of little columns of bone that are arranged in concentric circles around a central canal. Let's just say this one is our osteon of interest. So now we're ready to switch to our low power objective for a closer look. Once we have identified our target of interest, we can fine tune our focus and move on to the high powered objective. At this point, it should take very little adjustment on the fine focus knob to bring our subject clearly into view. Our final topic is depth of field. And depth of field refers to the depth at which we can view an image. So that is a sliver of space defined between two distances from the lens. The sliver of space will get thinner and thinner the closer we get to our subject. Let's take this example where our field of view is several miles across out on the horizon. You can see all the mountains clearly. You can see the valleys clearly. You can see all the trees. The trees and rocks in the foreground and even the grasses are all in focus. This shows we have a very large depth of field. In fact, our depth of field is practically infinite. Now consider you bring your focus into something close to you, like reading a book. You'll notice that the words on the page are in focus, while everything beyond the page is blurry. This is a technique that's also used in portrait photography, where you try to capture the person, but the background is blurry. This demonstrates a much smaller depth of field, so that if you want to change focus, you'll actually have to refocus onto another subject. So for example, let's say that instead of looking at the E slides label on the slide box, we wanted to look at the icons on the computer screen. In order to do this, we actually have to change focus, which on the microscope is accomplished by the use of our fine focus knob. A good way to investigate this in the lab is by using our colored thread slides. Here we have some slides that have three threads that are laid over one another in such a way that we have three different layers or three different planes of focus that we can play with. As always, we start by placing our subject under the scanning objective lens. You'll notice that while the slide may look small to our eyes, there really is quite a bit of depth on the slide when we consider it in terms of the scale of what the microscope sees. This is how our image will look under the scanning objective lens. As you can see, the depth of field is actually fairly large, and we can see all three threads fairly clearly, so that they're all in focus. Now we're ready to move on to our low power objective, but we notice that the subject is no longer centered over the substage light, so this is where we use our stage control knobs to recenter it so that the object of interest is in the middle of our field of view. With that done, we can start to pay a little bit more attention to our focus. We notice that no part of the image is really in focus, so what we'll want to do is focus on each individual thread one at a time. To do that, we will want to change our plane of focus. This is done by using our fine focus knobs and making minute adjustments. First, let's bring our top thread into focus. It turns out it's the green one. So now we can bring the green thread into focus while the red and the yellow are a little bit blurry. Next, with a fine focus knob, we will bring the stage a little bit closer to the objective, which will have the effect of bringing the red thread into focus because it as we will see, is between the green and the yellow thread. Finally, with one more adjustment of the fine focus knob and bringing the stage a little bit closer still, we can bring the yellow thread, which is on the bottom, into focus. At this point, if we wish to view the subject under the high-powered objective, we can use the rotating nose piece to twist the high-powered objective into place so that we can now view the subject at 400 times magnification. As you can see, for a subject of this size, this really doesn't give us very much information, except that we can now see the individual strands within a single thread. So this concludes our demonstration in our two-part series in the proper care and use of the microscope.